Hello and welcome to Springdale District News. I'm Evan Payne and on today's show we'll take a look at the upcoming end of course exams and how students can prepare for them as well as take a look at the Shaw Elementary News program that is directed entirely by fourth and fifth graders. We say goodbye to an educational leader in Springdale and share some top spring break destinations. Today is Wednesday, February 20th and Springdale District News starts now. Our top story, Springdale is widely known to have top-notch educators. Retiring this year after decades of service is Administrator Dr. Don Love. Andrew Onstead tells us his story. Dr. Love is an influential member in the Springdale School Department, but is now retiring after being with the school district for 40 years. Dr. Don Love has been a mentor to me. He has been a friend to me. He has been an example to me. He hired me at Springdale High School and I taught there. Uh, he's been a resource to me about, uh, as I developed into an administrator, building administrator, about what, uh, what is the right way of doing things and right, what is the right way of working with students, parents, and teachers to be a successful high school. Don Love's day-to-day -day basis covers with many meetings and paperwork. We're in meetings a lot. Uh, so in a district this size, uh, with this, as many schools and as varied a curriculum as we have, uh, there, there's a constant need to meet and make sure we're moving forward in a unified manner and not getting all distracted and, and spread out. So the focus, uh, maintaining the focus on student learning, student achievement, taking care of students uh, is, is the center part of, of what I do. Dr. Love was a principal at Springdale High for about 10 years and has spent 20 years before that at different school districts and is now the assistant superintendent for grade instruction for grades 8 through 12. Um, I do enjoy going out to the schools um, uh, and interacting with, with students and, and teachers there. Don also says that he'll be missing much of the faculty and students. For SPS TV, I'm Andrew Onstead. Thanks, Andrew. Kim Garrett will be taking Don Love's position beginning in July. We also have another administrator leaving us this year, Mr. Hartzell Jones. He sat down with Springdale today for a two-part interview. Take a look. And uh, we just didn't have the specialty uh, coach positions like they do now where they have one for linebackers, defensive tackles, and so forth. Uh, I had the offensive line when I was in that position, and so I had all the offensive line, including the tight ends and so forth. Um, and then we did a lot of work around the field that the maintenance crews do now. Gerald mowed the field uh, <laughs> pretty much uh, every week, and we'd go out and help line the field and put the markers out for the end zones and so forth. And one year we uh, we repaired the goalposts. We took down the old goalposts and put the new goalposts. So <laughs> we just did those things that it was expected, and we didn't think twice about it. You can catch the whole interview on Springdale Today, which airs before this show. Or you can catch up on any Springdale Today show on our YouTube page. Just search for Springdale Schools TV. As spring approaches, teachers begin to prepare their students for their end of course exams. These exams gauge the knowledge and growth of students in a particular course. Students will take an EOC for every core course they have, excluding an advanced placement class. Students must place proficient or better on the exam or they will be recommended for remediation in the course. Ken Gibbs reports. The spring semester may mean nice weather and prom, but with that, it also brings tests. Lots of tests. I'm in biology. Be the EOC literacy. Uh, the EOC for biology. Then we will have two more in April. One is the geometry EOC and then the biology EOC. With so many upcoming tests, teachers are doing everything in their power to prepare students. We're doing writings and mathematic problems that help support those classes. And with the teachers supporting their students with extra practice, it helps students like Robin Strawhacker to be more prepared to take their test. They are giving me extra homework that I can actually understand. Um, they are giving me one-on-one -on -one, um, conversations about it. The first test is only two weeks away, beginning with the literacy exam. Thanks, Kenan. Students, make sure you eat a good breakfast and pace yourself. Make the district proud. Now it's time for news around the district.
the Parents Taking Leadership Action Program presented legacy projects at Jones Elementary School Monday morning. Each group shared some of the major things they've learned since last October. The PTLA is a literacy program provided to parents by one community and funded by Walmart. Congratulations to Myra Martinez, who was selected as the 2013 recipient of the National Center for Women in Information Technology Award in Aspirations in Computing for Arkansas and Northeast Oklahoma. This organization recognizes young women at the high school level for their achievements and interest in computing. Coming up after the break, we'll take a look at Shaw Elementary Newscast and showcase National Signing Day at Harbor High School as well as Springdale. In today's world, it's tough to stand out from the crowd. That's why I'm earning a graduate degree from Pittsburgh State University. My professors understand the demands of today's workplace. Pitt State's online and evening courses allow me to schedule my classes around my life. And I love the Gorilla Advantage program because I'm able to attend school at in-state tuition rates. It's your career. Take control of it. Big dreams, big ideas, big careers start at Pittsburgh State University. Welcome back. With emphasis on teaching rural skills to students, schools are beginning to introduce e-STEM classes. These classes focus on character building, creative writing, interactive science, and much, much more. However, Shaw Elementary is taking one step further by introducing a television broadcast program to fourth and fifth grade students. This class teaches teamwork and communication skills to the students. Drew Jenkins tells us just how Shaw is spicing things up. Three, two, one. And with that, Shaw Elementary students have lights, camera, and action. I definitely think they could be Neely or Dan Scoff, or they could even go CNN. Being the first annual television broadcasting class at Shaw Elementary, students get the chance to engage and understand what television production is all about. In our classroom, we watch CNN student news every morning, and so that kind of got them understanding the whole role of finding different stories and um, the pawns, the little kickbacks and stuff that they, they do. With a different job assigned to the students every week, the students prepare themselves for their upcoming show. <laughs> well, Ms. Herrera assigns us jobs, and then we go and research our jobs, and then we get filmed. Like, you want to be in this class if you ever get an opportunity. With KSSN Productions, Shaw students like Carson Sanders are glad that they have an opportunity to consider television broadcast as a career. I like this because it's it's different. Not every school has a broadcasting show like we do, and it's really neat learning all the jobs. Like maybe I could grow up to do some of this. For SBS TV, I'm Drew Jenkins. Thanks, Drew. These kids are amazing. If you want to see these kids' great work, just hop onto Shaw's page at SpringdaleSchools.org. National Signing Day was last Wednesday, February sixth. Let's take a look at Harbor Signing Day. Harbor students who signed include Adam Bolin, Sarah LaChance, Winston Rasmussen, Peyton Squires, and Jerry Wood. At the end of the show, we'll take a look back at Springdale High's Signing Day. Congratulations to everyone who signed. Coming up after the break, we'll take a look at the next installment of Pet of the Week and share some of the hottest spring break destinations. When I grow up, I want to be a doctor. When I grow up, I want to be a music teacher. When I grow up, I want to be a counselor. When I grow up, I want to be a future NBA player. The Springdale Schools, dedicated to our students, dedicated to our community, and dedicated to excellence. The Springdale Schools, building future leaders. Thank, Thank you. you. This week we sat down with Prince Charming, Ariel, and Snow White at the Springdale Animal Shelter. Take a look at these cats. Hey guys, we're here with the Springdale Animal Shelter, and we're here with Prince Charming, uh, Ariel, and Snow White. Uh, Courtney, can you tell us uh, about how old they are? Sure. These guys are about eight weeks old. They are uh, our first litter so far of the upcoming kitten season. So um, their two sisters have already been adopted. These guys are available now. They're very cute, and they're very friendly, and they're just your typical kittens. They've got a lot of energy, and uh, they like to get into things they probably shouldn't. But they're very, very friendly, and... Um, we're also, this, these bring up a great point, that we will be looking for foster homes for kittens in the next coming months. So if anyone is interested in fostering them, all you need is a bathroom and a couple of weeks till they're about this age and are ready to be rehomed into their new families. 
Okay, that's really awesome. And now, how are, how are they with kids? Um, you know, these guys are going to be fine with pretty much anybody. They're kind of moldable since they're still really young. Mm -hmm. But um, little kids, really little kids, probably wouldn't be the best because these guys are also babies themselves, and they just don't they don't know. <laughs> and Prince Charming's out of here. He's over <laughs> this. Um, but uh, they, you know, they do have claws. They they do play a lot, and they don't necessarily know that they shouldn't wrap all four paws around your hand and bite you like they play with each other um so it just takes a little bit of time for them to learn how to have manners and behave like a normal mm -hmm. i mean well they have beha they behave like normal kittens but to behave like a socialized cat that you know could be around little kids and uh, about how old should they get to be or uh, not how old but uh how big you know th I, these guys are a normal sized cat i would imagine they'd probably top out around 15 pounds i don't think they're gonna be tiny little cats but you never know <laughs> <laughs> And then uh, about how much is like uh, upkeep and like cost to own the own them? Um, well, whenever you get them from us, the girls will be eighty dollars, and Prince Charming will be sixty-five, which will cover the cost of their spay or neuter, and also the vaccines they've been given here, um, a dewormer, and also a microchip. But these guys are young; they've been given one vaccine at the shelter, but they're going to need two more of uh, the yearly boosters for uh, their normal kitten diseases. So you can expect to take them to the vet at least twice. Re, um, you know, soon after adopting them, but um, you know, normal yearly vet costs are, I mean, probably under three hundred dollars. I would imagine in general, just for a normal checkup to make sure they're doing okay. I know this is a big deal about spay and neuter and the microchipping. Could you talk a little about uh, a little bit about that? Yeah, um, it's really important to have your pet spayed or neutered. Um, animals that don't have their reproductive parts don't tend to wander away from home, um, but a lot of times we have dogs getting loose because they're in heat or you know, they know that the neighbor's dog might be, and they get loose. Uh, cats are the same way. Cats can reproduce a lot during a year. I think, I think they can have four litters of kittens, and each litter of kittens ranges anywhere from three to six or so. Um, so that kind of exponentially increases over the course of a season with more cats not being spayed or neutered. Um, and the microchip is really important uh, because it's basically an ID tag for your animal, but it's located under their skin. It's not like a GPS or a LoJack device, mm -hmm. but um, if they do show up here and we scan them, that way we can you know, get them back to their owners um, in a short time. Um, their collars can fall off with tags, so I mean, it's just important to microchip them so then that way you can find them if they get lost. Okay, well there you guys have it. Come by the Springdale Animal Shelter and you can adopt uh, Snow White, Ariel, or Prince Charming today. For more information on how to adopt one of these cats, visit the Springdale Animal Shelter today. Also, remember to have your pets spayed or neutered. Now let's take a look at some of the hottest spring day destinations for 2013. Check back next week for more Spring Break tips. Coming up after the break, we'll take a look at Bulldog TV and HPWN shows, and we'll also share with you the Springdale Highs National Signing Day. True to its Christian heritage, Ozarks prepares those who seek to live life fully, those who seek the richness of life provided by the study of liberal arts and the quality of life provided by professional preparation. We provide a uniquely supportive, academically sophisticated, and challenging environment on a beautiful campus adjacent to the Ozark Mountains. Our first priority is the education of students who come to us from diverse backgrounds. The University of the Ozarks. Welcome back. Now let's take a look at the next installment of Springdale High's Bulldog TV. Thanks, Evan. This week on Bulldog TV, we will be featuring stories on the SHS Mock Trial Team, a fashion story featuring A Moment to Remember, the segment Pause and Unleashed. Make sure to tune in and check us out. 
Thanks, Springdale. Tune in at Fridays at 7 to see Bulldog TV and at 7.30 to see Harbor Show. Now let's see what Harbor has coming up in HPWN. Thank you, Sabrina. On today's show, we bring you an organization that has made an impact nationally and locally. Plus, we bring you a voice that you might recognize from all over Arkansas. Make sure to tune in every Friday at 7.30 on channel 219. We'll back to you guys. Thanks, Harbor. To catch more HPWN, visit our YouTube page. Springdale Schools also has a variety of other award-winning shows that you can catch up on at any time by searching for Springdale Schools TV on Facebook, Twitter, or YouTube. Well, that does it for us. Be sure to check back next Wednesday to see more Spring Break tips. We now leave you with Springdale High's National Sign Day. Once again, I'm Evan Payne, and thanks for watching Springdale District News. Thanks for everybody coming out. A uh, little uh, unique uh, situation. Obviously, we, we've done this for several years. Two years ago, we had six athlete uh, football players sign scholarships. Last year, we had two. This year, we've got two. Unique in the fact that uh, not only am I a football coach, as you guys know, but I'm also a father here, so that's a little bit of a unique situation. No, but I know I appreciate you coming out. Jane Clay worked extremely hard uh, for this uh, for this moment. They had plenty of uh, opportunities and, and just kind of fell in love with the place that they're going. And, and we're really proud. I know they they feel real home here at Springdale. And uh, I know they've got a couple of things they might want to say. Jay? <laughs> I'd just like to thank everybody for coming out and supporting us. Uh, thanks for all the support throughout the years. Y'all never let us down. Uh, really, Springdale is the perfect place if you want to come play football. I mean, y'all just, everybody loves everybody here. So that's just great. And I just thank my family, God, and my friends for always being through the hard times and we always stuck together. Uh, I just want to say thanks for everything y'all done for me. I mean, I could have done it without teammates and coaches and family and support and friends. And just, just an awesome experience playing here uh, for all of us. Just hope I can take everything I learned and just go play college. So it's been an awesome deal to that. So, thanks. <laughs> Carry on the tradition that Springdale High School of uh, future college players have done for years and years. And uh, sign your life away. Coach Stella called in. Did he have something he wanted to say? Always do. There he is. Our, our Springfield Public Schools Athletic Director, Coach Wayne Stella. Can y'all hear me? I got good enough voice, don't I? How many of you have played football here at Springdale? Stand up. Are these your teammates? Yeah. Give them a round of applause. tradition here at Springdale of producing winners. Here's two of them right here. We got some dandies that have played football on this field out here for about 100 years. And that's going to continue. And the one thing that I like about what our kids do, they have success here, they go on someplace else, they come back. But the one thing that there always will be is Bulldogs. 
You're part of the family. Best of luck.